Thank you very much, Al Khanan. It's a great honor to be here tonight with Adam Broadman. We've Baruch Hashem seen tremendous things from way back. Me and Adam go back to his days in the teens, in the teen division at Ura Zone. And I still remember that first Friday night when I saw Adam up on the chair, singing and dancing his heart out of feeling the energy of Shabbos. I knew that Adam's going to be going tremendous places. Adam is here tonight with us to share with us his journey, his tremendous, tremendous journey of sacrifice and all the programs of Ura that he's been involved in and all the individuals that made the difference to bring him where he is today. Adam, let's take everybody back to the beginning. Can you tell us, how did you end up in the zone? So that started with Chill Zone, obviously. Chill Zone is our Matzah yeah. Shabbos program, a brainchild of one of the counselors. One of the counselors came and said, we have Avas Ubanim. Let's get these boys. We'll be their Avas Ubanim. Yeah, I started, um, I was in a shul in Mill Basin, and a friend of mine was trying to get me to come to Chill Zone for a very, very long time, and I kept refusing, and then he told me there was pizza. He, he missed that part out, and then, then there was raffles, and I was like, okay, I'll come. He's like, you can't lose. So I came. And the first time I came, I met this person who I still am in touch with till this day. His name is Daniel Moshe Geltfish. He's my Torah mate for years. And I met him. I fell in love with this guy. He's such a sweet soul. And I won the raffle the first time I went to Chill Zone. I won this boom box. It's a huge, like, just speaker system that I had no use for. But I was so happy that I won the raffle for the first. I don't win raffles, but I felt like maybe I'll win a raffle. And that's why I bought one tonight also. I bought a raffle for five bucks. I'm going to Eretz Yisrael, six tickets, inviting, I guess, whoever wants to come. So that was, that was the start. Like, Chill Zone is where it really started. And how did that lead you from there into camp? So, you, know, you win a boom box, you come next week. You know what I mean? Like, you <laughs> came next week, and then the... And I kept coming, and I got really close with this person, Daniel Moshe Geldfish. And he started teaching me the olive base. The olive base? Yeah. He's teaching me... Uh, you didn't know the olive base beforehand? I, I, like, I knew Hebrew, because my mom's Israeli, but not as good as I should. Not at all. And uh, he, he taught me yeah, pretty much from the basics. I was learning olive base with him. So we needed more time, because at Chill Zone, we... We were doing Chomish and it was like a whole group. So he, we started learning even outside and we just became tour mates. And we did that. And then Ura introduced the zone. They had like, they had this crazy video. And you like, you didn't really have a choice. You had to say, I want to go. I mean, this video was like so awesome. It was like, do you like ATVs? Do you like to have fun? And... It showed everything the zone has to offer, and I, and I was like hypnotized along with everyone else in uh, Chill Zone that, that faithful night, and I was like, I'm coming. I'm coming to Ura. Wow. So this Torah mate of yours, how much of an impact did he have on your life? Tremendous. I mean, this guy, he, he went above and beyond. He taught me Aleph Bays, which means he gets credit for like every word of Torah I've ever learned, and he also taught me like just basic Yiddish guy. It's like just by being just a good, like normal, just really like sweet Jew. And we continued into the zone. When I came to the zone, that was also pretty awesome. Like I met Rabbi Zucker before oh, I came to the yeah. Zucker. Yeah, Rabbi Zucker is like, he's also. Well, what yeah. was your first impression of Rabbi Zucker in the zone? <laughs> it's, I don't know. Amazing. I loved him so much. And I still do. And he, he stuck with me till I even went to yeshiva. He came with me to my interview in the yeshiva I went to Daniel, after. Yeah, Daniel Moshe Daniel Gelfish Moshe came with Gelfish you to interview. With Rabbi Zucker. I had the whole team. I had an all-star team. I came in to, to Darche Toro. I had my Torah mate on my right. I had the teens director on my left. And I came in. And uh, that was great. That was if great. you would be able to give a message right now today to Daniel Moshe Gelfish, Gelfish. Yeah. What do you think you would say? Because we happen to have him right here on the line. I'm sorry about that surprise, but he's on the line right now. <laughs> say something, Daniel Moshe. 
I mean, uh, <laughs> hi, <laughs> how you doing, brother? Um, I, I don't think there's anything that you, we should, we should probably start learning again. <laughs> we should pick up and I love you. Thank you so much. And I totally, yeah, like he knows this. He, I hope he knows that like, you Daniel really Moshe, the are you there on the line with us? I am here, Adam. I am so warmed and touched by every word you say, and I love you too, wow. and I would love to start learning again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Daniel Moshe, <laughs> let me ask you a question. Yeah. When you started learning with this boy, Olive Bays, what did you think would be the future of him? Did you think he would become Shemir Shabbos? Did you, think, did you ever dream he would become Yeshiva Bakr? I, I, had no, I had no such dreams other than his dedication and commitment from the start to want to learn the off days, that I think that was a pretty good indicator that something was going to happen. Wow. So from <laughs> what I heard rumors that you used to walk a quite a far every Shabbos to spend time with, uh, with Adam. 45-minute walk from Borough Park to, uh, I forgot the shul. Well, where's the shul? Daniel, my brother, is on the line. I don't remember. <laughs> Surprise, huh? Yeah, and um, and he was actually like one of the first Shabbos meals I'd go to, and wow, Daniel's mom cooks the most <laughs> unbelievable Shabbos meal, and like just this beautiful blue table, and the mirrors were insane, like his whole family harmonizing, and and we'd learn olive phase, and that just kept going and going. Uh, that was really cool that you guys just got him on the line. Whoa. <laughs> okay, so Daniel Moshe brings you to Darche. So, yeah, so, and... Did you come to the zone thinking, I'm going to the zone, and I'm leaving the zone in a year, and, I'm, and at the end of the summer, I'm heading to Darche? Oh, no, totally not. No, not even close. <laughs> <laughs> came into the zone, like, totally not. I didn't even know what, what, what a Darche was. I, I don't think I knew what it was even when I went. Like, <laughs> I just knew, like, I love the counselors. This is where... Like the ones I had a personal cashier with, like uh, Yosef DeVore, if you guys pull him up right now, that'd be really cool. He's <laughs> <laughs> okay. just got pulling up people. Uh, Yosef DeVore, a lot of great names. Uh, Noah Kiefer was going. Hi, Noah. If you guys are going to get him too, like, I don't know. So I had no idea. I was going to go to a yeshiva though. I was going to go to a Jewish school, but I didn't really like know anything about Jewish schools. Like I kind of just went to this random school like i kind of signed up for this place i don't even think the rabbis were the rabbis were from i don't know if the kids were retrospect it was like a weird place and it was it was a great place i don't want to put it down but um i just i didn't know what to look for in a yeshiva at all and i just knew when i came to ura i made friends and i knew like I, if i was going to go to darke i'd have like the support of uh like Yosef Devor, these are older, really like really sweet, like beautiful guys. It's like these people like this that made me fall in love with Judaism. So I'm like, yeah, sure, sign me up. Okay, you have to wear a black hat. I'll take it. That's all it takes. I'll come wow. coming. So people are paying money right now, giving a couple of dollars for boys like you that knew nothing. About how many of your friends from back then, today, are B'nai Torah, are from, that you know here in Lakewood? Do you still keep up with some of these people? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, I have, I keep up with, I have a I friend. say any names, but. Yeah, I'm really bad with names. I just, Mickey, remember Mickey? Sure. Mickey, I, I spoke to him the other day. I'm still in touch with Ellie Begun. Ellie Begun, hi. How are you? I'm just. Okay, he just had a baby boy. He did. He yes. Just, he did. Mazel on Thursday. Tov, mazel yes. Tov. He has a good mile coming up. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. That's oh. great. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. So tell us a little bit about, you moved on, Darche, Darche became a family. What is the DU? DU, I believe, is one of the most crucial things. We have the teens coming into teens, and they're still not settling and making a life for themselves. But the DU, I think that's the clincher. Tell us a little bit about the DU. So DU is, is like where it came in for me. It was like, I went to... I went to a, like a yeshiva, which is pretty like pretty like standard regular yeshiva. But when you become a balchuva, you can't really you you have to stay connected to like where you started. And for me, that's Ura. Ura is where it began, and Ura is like where I'm staying. So like I realized after a couple of years in yeshiva, like I needed I needed to go back. Like 
I needed the zone, but I'm like, wait, I'm, I'm way too old. Oh, there's a program called DU for guys just in my situation. And I came back to the zone and that like rekindled all of those, all of those, like, it was like a whole like Genesis again of like all the reasons, like all those things that I loved so much about becoming a Yid. And I came to DU as an adult. I was like, I came to, when I came to Ur as an eighth grader versus coming as an adult with uh, learning with other guys like my age and the staff there was amazing. I'm still very close with Rabbi Rafi. I go to his house every week for Shabbos. I don't know if you could say that, but <laughs> <laughs> I do go, it's great food. And I'm very close with him and he gave me tremendous guidance. Let's just ask you a quick, um, you were just chosen to be the uh, door mashkiach in Waterbury Yeshiva until they closed down for the Corona Zman. Yeah. And what are your dreams and aspirations now? You've been through the zone, you've been through the chill zone, you've been Torah mates, you've been through DU. What are your dreams and aspirations now? If you could get the ultimate job. The ultimate job? Well, um, the ultimate job? It would be something, it would be in the realm of helping Jews come, come back to uh, like outreach. It would be outreach, it would be teaching, it would be teaching um, Torah, it would be like outreach because that's, I feel like, um, that's, uh, that's where I feel like my strengths are because it's, um, it's where I we really like kindled that, that spirit inside of me and that would be, that would be a dream. Like if I can uh, outreach and just help guys, let's. So we've just seen again one of hundreds or maybe thousands of Bachrim starting off from nothing. What kind of kid were you, by the way, back then, before you showed up in the zone? Before I showed up in the zone, um, <laughs> uh, before I showed up in the zone, it's actually so. Like I started becoming religious a little bit before I came to the zone, and. Um, I was like, I was starting my path I, in a shul in Mill Basin, in a Sephardi shul. I actually started out Sephardi, even though I'm Ashkenaz, and then Ura Ashkefied me, whatever. I just, I, they still had the, the kibbe and the lachmajin, so I didn't lose out, so I was fine. And before I came to the zone, I was like beginning my religious journey. I was leaving public school, and I knew I wanted to go to a Jewish school. Like I got my letter from Morrow High School and I like chucked it in the garbage. I'm like, nah, not gonna happen. Wow. <laughs> I knew I wanted to go to a Jewish school. I just didn't know like, okay, I'm not, wasn't exactly sure what a Jewish school was, but there was my, I have to, I have to give a shout out to uh, my eighth grade English teacher, Mrs. Rosengarden. She was a, Jewish ladies, a wife of a rabbi, and she was my English teacher in eighth grade. And she would, she was like, she saw like I was having an interest in Judaism and she like, she caught on to it and she started bringing me like kosher food and talking to me about Hashem. And she like, at a certain point, she's like, you want to go to a Jewish school, Adam? And you need to, this is where you belong. I'm like, I don't know what to do. And she literally started driving me to random yeshiva. It's like trying to help me out and she really did it was like amazing she used to bring me squash every day thank you very much woman. adam just i just want every listener to get this message over here you have a boy who knows nothing an english teacher meets up with him and sees that spark and takes him to the next level says move you on maybe try the chill zone chill zone takes him to camp camp can sends him to darche where he gets the whole family of amazing amazing we've sent so many bachram through yeshivas like darche and they've asked us for more, send us more. Bachram became the top Bachram in Darche. From the camp, from knowing nothing, moving on, coming back to be part of the DU family, and now hoping to become and get a job in Kir V'choykim. And we want to thank Adam for joining us. Thank you. And of course, everybody, if you want to be part of this, this is happening every day, every minute. Be part of it, enter the auction, and you will have this chus of partnering with people like Adam and Daniel Moshe Gelfish.